It's been so long. It's been so long, friends. <laughs> Welcome back to the Authentic Faith Podcast. It's September 10th. 10th. We are out here again. We back. It feels different. <laughs> Yeah, new room, we're, we're new si- setup. We're trying to get used we're to this. We're trying to a get situated. Cramped. It is a little bit. Like, am I looking at you? Yeah, I don't I know. The I know, Which right? Which way am okay. I going? Okay. And I'm used to like hanging. <laughs> we're used to being spread out by two tables. We are. <laughs> I feel like you're a little close. I know. You can spit that way a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. Just, Just chill out a little bit over there. Just stay on your side. I'll stay on my side and we're good. <laughs> Uh, I am not. Yeah, that's really funny. Anyway, we're back. So <laughs> I think we're both kind of like <sighs> most of us on the staff are like, what's happening? So much is changing. And so putting the podcast in here is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping a podcast right in the middle of whatever's going on right now yeah. is just like opening the windows and the doors on a house that's just in total chaos. That construction um taco trucks in and out feeding the guys um dump runs um deliveries I can't stop laughing it's crazy and then in the middle of it like bible studies in the dust <laughs> this is what's been happening <laughs> we've had prayer meetings Can literally in the sheetrock no <laughs> No, we we're right now we're yeah. we're in a new place because um, I can't stop laughing. We've given up our other podcast room to uh, <laughs> have a simulation to the county of Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> so like, guys, listen, we're doing the best we can here. We're holding it we're, together. We're having we're gonna have a simulation room in our office. You no, know, to be honest, I think I needed this. Yeah, this is a little this bit good. therapeutic for me yeah. to be able to talk <laughs> through some of the challenges. <laughs> we're currently our podcast spot is in the middle of. Like AA is meeting nearby. Yeah, we have an AA group meeting out here. Um, and I'm like, should we whisper? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a um, rotating podcast. Matt Matt Broughton and I were talking, setting up yesterday. We were like, this feels kind of like we just like a uh, go with it. Like, what room's open? <laughs> what happened this summer? Even I don't know. I feel like I just that's what we were, we were and, and it's gone. What happened this summer? We stopped because we knew it was getting into a, a really busy season. That was wise. <laughs> Which was wise, yes. Yeah. But um, now we're back, and I don't even oh, remember what happened. We had a um, back to school event recently. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Incredible back to school <laughs> yeah. event. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, we had VBS, all kinds of VBS, two yeah. types. Do, do <laughs> they? So, so our back to school event, can mm-hmm. we just yeah. comment on yeah. that real quick? Yeah. Um, I believe we had five, six hundred people out at Avenue Community Church. Yeah. We had um, ministry happening, bilingual ministry. Mm-hmm. We had uh, an altar call. We had young people answering calls to uh, to be set free from suicide and depression. And we gave away thirty thousand dollars. And brand wow. new Nikes and Converse, and still giving away. People are still we're asking. still doing it. And yeah. and shoes to kids, uh, backpacks. We had food. We yeah. had, it was a family event at that haircuts. time. The fair was going on. Haircuts at that time. The fair was going on. And right. so our mindset was, let's make this so good that the kids that couldn't go to the fair right. couldn't afford the fair would cool. get something really good yeah. with us. And so we had bounce houses and everything, but it was so special. It was so cool. Yeah. I think that same week we had another VBS that was in the evenings and like parents came with their kids. For the Spanish church. For the Spanish church. Yeah. It was English and Spanish speaking, but yeah. And then we gave out fair tickets um, Mm -hmm. with um, City Kids, New Seasons Church, and Two Trees. It was really cool. It was busy. That was a wild week. And then um, we did our own VBS, which is crazy. Yeah. And then... Uh, which was incredible. And we did a youth camp. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I've been flying all over the place with my daughter. Oh yeah. Who is True. a pro jujitsu player right yeah, now. And I'm Drew. trying to just help her pursue jiu-jitsu. her dream. I know. And this summer has been incredible. Yeah. It's been awesome. It's been stretching, but goodness. We made the, it. But the last four weeks have been just on a yeah. different level. What's what's been happening? You want to share what's been happening in here? Like, um, in the, well, I say here is the warehouse. Uh, I I like calling it the warehouse. I don't know. I know I <laughs> people don't like it, but it's like the storehouse. 
like the warehouse. You it's call it whatever you want to call it. Okay. I don't care. I just want to finish it. But <laughs> <laughs> what we've been praying in here doing worship, how was last week? Last week, last, last week was so good. I missed it. Um, <laughs> it's hard to explain to people all that's going mm-hmm. on if you haven't been on the journey. If you're walking into this right now and you say, man, what are they doing? <laughs> we don't even know. No, well, kidding. no, we, we well, no we're it, you do. it was all, I mean, we're riding a wave. Everything that we're doing right now has been initiated by God mm. and we're just trying to stay faithful to it. Yeah. And we've emptied every ounce of ourselves into the project, into the mission, into the vision. We've, in, we've emptied our time. We've emptied our resources. We've emptied money. We've emptied relational favor, <laughs> everything we could throw at this season. Yeah. We have emptied the arrows like Elisha, You know, when he said, if you would have to the king, he said, if you would have emptied the arrows completely. Right, right. You would have defeated, I believe it was Aram. Uh, We've emptied the arrows. Mm. That's what I was thinking this morning. I just kept thinking through it. I'm like, there are no more arrows. Mm. Like you've emptied everything. And so anything that God has given us, we've thrown at the stream. Yeah. (laughs) Last night was the first night where um, I don't feel the pressure of ministry. We can talk about the pressure of ministry and we can Ooh. talk about the conflict and relationships and all that. Cause there's a whole other yeah. side to this yeah. monster. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but, um, I don't feel the pressure the way that a lot of people would think I do, you know, like in all this, um, Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he said, my yoke is easy. Mm-hmm. My burden is light. Mm-hmm. And so I actually walk with a, light yoke most of the time until it's like whoa until you have these moments like last night i was eating dinner and things were good and then you go in and out there's like waves of Mm. pressure that come where all of a sudden like it gets a little hard to breathe and you go oh crap yeah (laughs) what needs to happen to get us there right now i mean there's i don't have the ability to do this yeah i've emptied every Thing I have in the quiver to get this done and now we need some others to come in and but help that's us why it's so good like you said on Sunday if you didn't listen on Sunday um uh, September 8th I don't even know what day it is I have to like really look <laughs> September 8th was so good and you talk about this and like even inviting people into the process because you can't do it alone not supposed to no yeah we're literally doing a chair campaign yeah which is so cool buy your chair at church um we need uh we're looking for um 500 chairs and we have estimates at you know 50 to 60 dollars a chair or whatever and so let's oh just gosh. say it's 60 dollars a chair it's yeah. sixty thousand dollars that, that we need right now oh and that's just the tip of the iceberg that's the tip of the iceberg we're still not done with the final construction stuff and there's so much that needs to happen and we've got sound and tech gear and carpet and paint we don't need carpet or paint <laughs> <laughs> that's the way i'm feeling right now i'll be honest with you that's the way i'm feeling I'm right like now. Raw, yeah we're back. just gonna go raw and we're gonna yeah. do nothing but the basics right now but man sound um, and sound and like yeah. so <laughs> we don't we didn't if we would have had a strategic plan to get in this we would have still been in the planning phase mm. because our church is just Probably young, 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 that. not by maturity, but young in just time. Yeah. We're only like six years old yeah. and we started from nothing. So like to see where God has led us now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's wild. It's really crazy. And the doors he's open and the things that we've been able to do without this building. Cause that just shows you, and I'm excited to be in here, but like, we have but, not waited on this no, building. No, and at may all. we never forget that that it doesn't take the, a building. And this is going to be a blessing and do even more sending or bringing in and sending out and um, a safe place and a, and a healthy place for people to come and a refuge. But we are doing, we can do so much without walls. We just, have been. Just on the outreach side, yeah. this number might seem far fetched to some of you because you're like, how? That little church on Ventura Avenue. How is this happening? Our budget for outreach right now is 800000 a year. That's more than our staff budget internally. That's more than everything. And that doesn't come from church funding. That comes from outside people that believe in this. 
That doesn't come from tithing. That comes from outside resources and people that believe in this. But we've just said, yes, we're starting a family wellness center. We're starting a a ministry called West Side Wellness where we're actually bringing in. uh, Do you know about this yet? No. Yeah. So uh, I like that name. Yeah, we the county of Ventura there. We're partnering with them and we're going to start the West Side Wellness and we have uh, clinical psychologists Whoa, that we're hiring we and yeah. bringing in yeah. and they're going to lead boys and girls groups to uh, work with teens that have been in domestic violence or sexual abuse yeah, or like mentoring them Is trauma. That... No, they're going oh, no. to actually help them like okay. a counseling support group. Wow. And so um, we See? got we got approved to do this. And so we're launching this now. Wow pretty crazy let's go yeah like there's so many things that are happening don't let it stop you Uh, you we have a we have a full uh, overdose opioid prevention program with three staff members that i did know (laughs) she works for them um mariah does this for free (laughs) she doesn't get paid for this this is a passion project um but her actual job is she goes and educates and uh, equips other organizations, public organizations, police departments, fire departments, schools, other nonprofits, Library. churches, libraries, yeah. whoever, mm-hmm. with overdose uh, prevention um, yeah. supplies and educates them on how to prevent mm-hmm. opioid addiction. Yeah. Trying Pretty to crazy. get it more in Spanish also yeah. and educating. Yeah, it's We've cool. started mentor programs on the Avenue yeah. where we actually, uh, we're in all the schools. And so we believe that, um, you know, we want to, we minister to the homeless, but we also want to minister to the almost homeless, mm. the ones that don't have parents or the ones that are just on their way to jail or whatever. And so we're trying to catch these kids prevention. in the youth, yeah. a lot more prevention right now. So we've started mentor programs that are just, um, mm-hmm happening all week long <laughs> there's that's cool there's Building. so much there's so much so like much. so this is going to be like a little cherry on top to gather because it's so sweet to gather together and have a space for people to to worship the lord and then go back out stronger it's like come in to go out stronger you know instead of come in and be filled up only and you're just here like what can i get out of this but like filled up so i can go out i know and it's, it's beautiful that's i i, what I we're talking see this about here. i see this this is going to be a house for Jesus. Like it's a place for people to meet him. Mm. They can meet him anywhere, but he'll be here in a special uh, way. Yeah. They can meet him wherever they can meet him at Starbucks. They can meet him at McDonald's or in and out or wherever. Probably not McDonald's, but uh, <laughs> there's no Holy spirit there. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> they meet him anywhere. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. But here there is going to be something special. It's exciting. And I don't know how to get it done. So if you're out there yeah. and you would like to help us, uh, help. we definitely need help. Um, we don't necessarily need, I, I guess, workers. We need money. We need resources. What resources? Like if you would like to volunteer time or I don't know what. We don't need equipment right now. Why don't you come to us and ask? Yeah, just come to us and ask what the need is. (laughs) Uh, Really, though, the need is financial right now. Yeah. And so Mm -hmm. just throw it out there. Something that I was thinking when you were speaking on Sunday was Nehemiah. I mean, I I was like, Nehemiah. (laughs) Like building of the, rebuilding of the wall, rebuilding Mm -hmm. of the whole, you know, their, what had been destroyed. And it was families that came together. Mm -hmm. Even the children were involved where they were helping guard and build certain areas of the walls. And it wasn't just like Nehemiah. He came back and he brought people into it. And it's so good. And I think, and Ashley Nettles, my, my boss for overdose prevention, my other boss, uh, she was bringing up um, uh, Moses. And when he was up on the mountain, you know, getting words from the Lord, and then he came down and it, the people brought together what they had to build. Mm. Um, mm. And so... Yeah, it's just always like community. It's always everyone together. It's not just Moses. Well, in our daily reading today, yeah. it was Second Chronicles 36. That was gnarly. The last like verse or last two, three verses, it says that Cyrus mm. was stirred in his spirit and he said, the Lord has asked me or the Lord God has asked me to build a house for him in Jerusalem. The Lord... The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all this part, the last verse. Yeah. 
has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him and let him go up. That was today's reading. Yeah. It, yeah, it spoke to me a lot. And I was thinking, that's it. Cyrus is good. Just fulfill yeah. the assignment. That's it. Like just obsessed over the assignment. Um, it's obviously, I mean, <laughs> and this is the, I talked about it Sunday a little bit, but like leading in vulnerability. Mm. I think uh, you can be misunderstood because people could say, well, it looks like he's in over his head. Well, obviously, <laughs> obviously. And anyone who's tried to do anything great yeah. or try to go after a miracle or believe in the impossible or take a risk mm -hmm. or whatever, you're obviously going to be in over your head. But that doesn't mean you're not called to do it. Right. How do you demonstrate yeah. heaven on earth if you only do what's possible? Ooh. There's your clip. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. How do, how, do, how do you, so, so like the idea that Everyone stepped out. You're not walking in wisdom because you're doing risky things or because you're completely spent on something or like you've given your whole heart to a vision. The idea that you're not walking in wisdom isn't rooted in the wisdom of the scriptures because it says that Jesus is the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus gave his entire life for one thing. Mm, that's you what people say about. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. like. That's good. I think this oh. is mm -hmm. this. On a, on a bigger scale, what's happening, I think, in my life in our church, it's like we're demonstrating for people what it looks like to see a promise fulfilled. Mm. There's seasons the where waiting. you have massive breakthrough, and then Ooh. there's seasons where you wait, and then you work while you wait. You never stay idle. You know. Um, this is so good. Everyone can apply that to their lives yeah. in, in waiting for anything and waiting for the, a promise. And That's the needs good. in the early phase are very different than the needs in the middle. And the needs in the middle are very different than the needs for the final phase, you know, and we're, um, how do you, how do you not keep from being disappointed? How do you keep hope and how do you in long suffering, or if that is even what you call it, like, how do you keep, um, what do you do it like disappointment can creep in every other day so good every other season and we've been waiting how many years to be here over four years and it's funny because let's say someone's waiting to be pregnant they're waiting and they get pregnant finally after years and years and years of trying okay you had it now what there has to be more i feel like there is that thing that you want and god maybe has promised you but then once you get it like i feel like the building isn't it there's more after, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, we're contending for this and we're excited for this thing, but, but then what? This is an open door. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. This is an open yeah. door. That's it. And so Jesus is the door and he is, the he says when, prize. yeah, he says, I am the door yeah. and whoever comes through me, this mm -hmm. is where we're going as we're going through him. He says, whoever goes through me will come in and out and find pasture, which that is, find good things you're gonna find your needs met you're gonna find space to live and yeah. breathe and, and grow and multiply like this is the beginning for us this Ooh. is simply the door this is i feel like that's good this is like a door to like him because he is our inheritance he is the he is the everything so it's like i, I maybe in my singleness i want to be married so bad but like that's not the end that's if that's such a sad ending if i just want to have a spouse that's a doorway yeah right yeah. yes so it's like what after that you know all these things like and if i never did get that if i never did have that if i never had if we never did have the we will but but you know i think there that's a good it's a door that's good yeah and i and i navigating think navigating all you of know it. and you asked the question or you were starting to ask the question about disappointment yeah. like how you navigate it yeah. with the long suffering mm. um I, there's several things I could speak on with that, but I think the first thing is like, I have a real, my goals have changed mm. in this. And so where in the public eye, you might see that, you know, or like, it, I guess if you're a witness to what's happening in our ministry, you might think that my goal is to build a church. Um, that's not my goal. My goal is to find time with Jesus. Mm. And so my prize is actually in my quiet time. I actually find the most peace at my dinner table at home. I find the most peace at my Traeger cooking tri-tip. <laughs> okay. I love watching my girls do their sports. I love uh, 
going shopping with the girls. I love hanging out with Shanna. My life, I I long for the simple things and the quiet mm. life. So like the long suffering, like I hide and shelter in the safety of the health of my life, like mm. in my life with the Lord, That's number good. one, like when I'm with him, I feel good. I feel okay. I feel secure when I'm with my family. There's a lot of peace mm-hmm. there. We don't have chaos in our home. We don't have conflict in our home. We're busy. We have a lot of responsibility. We're running all over the place. Yeah. There's some weeks where me and Shanna, we're like high fiving each other. And it's like, we're going different directions and trying to handle things. And, you know, but then, really like that's the goal of my life the church building process is not my number one desire yeah (laughs) you know so like yeah that's where the misunderstanding is does that not mean that i want to do it no obviously but i find my time with jesus more important than that Mm, he's so much bigger than this yes and so the long suffering for me um i really like i go three months without thinking about it Mm. because I actually am abiding with him on a regular basis. Take that. (laughs) You know, and where I'm enduring, I'm finding him in the conflict. I'm finding him in the waiting, in the disappointment, um, where I'm processing life change with people and love with people and death with people all can bring us closer to him like even 100%. conflict and the difficulties of like people because we are in a business of people yeah. not business but we're in the ministry of people that like which is the the ministry of people which is the business of life and it death is, whoa. whoa and for whatever reason in the church everything's attached on like so many layers that everything's intense mm, it's so the intense. soul yeah the body the mind the spirit like everything is so intense so we don't have I guess the we don't have the the luxury of being able to separate a soul decision and a physical decision like we don't just fire no. people or we don't just let people go it's, it's God's so involved it's so like so different and we all are experiencing something together it's so different yeah it's messy <laughs> you could save yourself from a lot of pain because we have had so we talk about how busy and awesome the last six months have been Ooh, but ever, but Let's talk about the hurt. 2024 has been one of the most difficult relational Hmm. years that I've had personally since probably, I mean, it's been, I mean, there's COVID. That was a rough one. Everyone like, man, 2020, 2020 was rough so that I could see three mountaintops, three peaks of like difficulty (laughs) that, that I had to find Jesus on. It's like 10 years ago when we moved to the city, that first year or whatever, that was wild. Oh my gosh. That season. Then there's COVID. And then there's this year. Wow. <laughs> so it's on that same level. Wow. The conf- yeah. the relational conflict. Yeah, yeah. Where you're going, what in the world yeah. is going on? Am I going crazy right now? I feel like in all of those, you've had to bless not just an enemy because they're not, not everyone's your enemy at all, but like bless people that the 10 years ago was like, okay. And then COVID, it was more political. I'm going to bless our political leaders. And not only that, I'm going to bless people who are running afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to give people space. I'm not going to put pressure on people to be at church when they're scared. Yeah. Mm. And you see people walk away. But also we're going to. But we're not going to stop. Gonna, we're going to yeah. do what we're going to do. And again, now blessing people who are like parting ways or. It's funny. Like each, I, uh, instead um, of tearing them down, it's like you could tear all those people down and be a victim. Yeah. But you, we are deciding like bless. And anyway, yeah. This is uh, this is uh, because here we talk about things in a really vulnerable we way, do. which I <laughs> love because it is the authentic faith podcast. Yeah. But it was okay, funny because um, some would look at like our church structure and like we're still developing or whatever. And the reality is, in six years, we didn't plan to be here. Mm. But in six years, we've we've had nonstop warfare. I mean, we had a whole council put together of people and all this stuff. Like in 2019, we were rocking, we were growing, like things were happening. And then in 2020, like the entire ministry scattered. Yep. And there were a lot of leaders That's in true. our city that when their council scattered mm. and everybody stopped coming to church and every, I get it for good reasons, probably. It just wasn't going to be the, what I, I was not going to listen to a spirit of fear in that time, in that time, 
I, uh, I remember this. I think we had some very intimate prayer meetings. Yeah. With just a handful of people. Some were on our staff. Some, some my were favorite moments. Some were not on our staff, but now are on our staff. Um, some were um, called from another church. You know, there it everything shifted. The structure of our ministry shifted. Yeah. In 2020. It was like, what else um, can we do but pray? Yeah. And so, um, Jemmy, the other day, she said something that really encouraged me because somebody was uh, asking questions about, like, you know, my authority and some other stuff. And I, um, which was, which is totally fair. Totally fair. Like, you ready. how did we get here? Yeah. How do yeah. we get here? How did, who's backing this? Mm. Like, who's behind this? Uh, and Jemmy goes, nobody has a right to question what's going on because the elders ran. They ran in fear in 2020, Dang. not our church, not just our church. Cause there were a lot of elders that did not run in yeah. our church, but the elders of the city ran. Dang. And so what's happening right now is she, she really encouraged me one day. I was having a bad day with criticism and stuff. And I was going, Oh my gosh. Like I literally like other people think about wow. what I'm, other people think about what I'm doing far more than I think about what I'm doing, mm. you know? And, um, I told her or she said something uh, along these lines, but Dang. it just, she ended on like, like, you're in the reward of your obedience because you didn't run in 2020. And people are like, who are you to do who this? Who are you? Like, who cause we're getting feet. Like we, we've been, oh I went gosh. through a list of things that people have said about me and us. Like we've had people warning others about being involved with our church, our church. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like we're following Jesus. We believe in the Bible. Yeah, warn them. <laughs> like <laughs> warn them. I'm like, uh, somebody said, I, I just, I mentioned it Sunday, but, I don't know why it stuck with me. Uh, someone who really loves our church goes, yeah, she goes so crazy. She goes, people really, really love this ministry or they strongly caution you against it. And I don't understand what's so That's controversial. A strong word. Yeah. Strongly caution. Yeah. I guess about what? about what That's I don't understand. Strongly um, caution. You're going to get wrecked. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, on a Sunday. <laughs> I think it's like, I, I think here's what I think an established religious spirit fears what they can't control. Hmm. And so most of it's centered around control and establishment. And when Jesus does something outside of the establishment in the city, <laughs> like I didn't have to go to, um, yeah. we didn't go to like the council, well, the council of Ventura culture to see if we were Ventura enough to start this church. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> because we're not obviously, are we, good now? Are we, cool are we now? we're obviously are we not Ventura enough. Like <laughs> we'll never be Ventura enough. But what's interesting is my lifelong Ventura friends. They're like, we like you because you're you. Yeah. Who cares? We, we follow you because overrated. we don't care. Like yeah. there's this, like we look pride and arrogance with like we lift ourselves up in the culture like we are yeah. the gatekeepers yeah. of what can and cannot happen we're just over here doing stuff we're just over here following <laughs> jesus we're just and, and and the tension that others may feel like watching what's going on that doesn't exist on the inside if you come to our meetings come to our prayer meetings there's so much peace yeah so much peace yeah so much peace we're just focused on but like bringing down strongholds 100 percent. but that's what that's what jemmy was saying she's like she's like I got a front seat to this. You've just simply stayed with Jesus mm -hmm. and you didn't stop. You were single minded. That's it. That's how we got to where we are. It, and true. it's not, not just me now. There's 20 of us yeah. that did that, you know, and then that 20 became 200 and that 200 is multiplied. Now yeah. you've got multiple church properties and outreach ministries and all this stuff, but it was really not rooted in desire for any of that. It was like in 2020, you know what? Mm. I'm not going to prop up an organization. I'm here to serve and be a part of the organism. And I'm not going to back down in 2020. I think that's kind of the problem <laughs> is that we've always been against the religious spirit and the political spirit. And I didn't, I didn't, we, I don't think we even knew it. I know I, from my point of view, I seem like you didn't like, we didn't know in 2019. I would say it was like trying to go with it. Kind of. We're trying to, well, even go with the political it. people try to hijack you a little bit hijack you they try to pull you into their camp oh yeah know, a little bit but like 2019 spirit, yeah. it was like i don't, we love jesus but somehow it kind of was like we're kind of trying to stay cool still trying to stay with it and then 2020 it was like something shifted where it was like we, since then i haven't we don't care to be part of any like those and so i think it's offensive to 
um, you, like you said, control people who are trying to figure it out. And there's like good, good um, intentioned people that are just like curious, like, wait, what is, can you explain to me? Cause I feel like, tell us about your board or tell us about your blah, blah, blah. Or just, they have good intentions of, they want to know what's going on. But I feel like so many people are coming up. That's them coming up against the, the religious spirit and like what a church is normally looks like. And, and it's like, yeah, we have a building, but we don't do it like that. But so I don't know. It's like a well, weird so interesting place to be is like in. If anybody would just simply ask me a question, I would share with them. Oh yeah. This is what the structure is. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Here's where I'd like to or go. We're building the structure. Here's so. where I'd like to go in the next year. Yeah. Here's what I'm considering for the next phase, whatever. And then like, here's my council of advisors. Yeah. Here's the people I talk to. Like, it's not like as controversial as people yeah. would think. It's mm-hmm. like we've just simply been this has been birthed outside of the power structure. Yeah. Yeah, which is funny cuz we love that. <laughs> somebody somebody uh somebody from our ministry um I might get pieces of the story wrong, but it cuz I heard it third hand, but uh or second hand, I don't know. But anyways, somebody from our ministry was at a restaurant recently. Oh gosh. And she says, at least the way the story came to me, she overheard somebody in the table next to her talking oh. about this church, this hipster church that's taking over the avenue. <laughs> and uh, she was like getting upset. And this this woman is a fierce defender she of what we're doing. She just happens to be in the wrong place. Right. <laughs> she, she does this all the time. So uh, what's funny is she got up and I guess goes, you don't know what they do for the poor and on and on. And you don't know. And she was just fiercely defending us, which was crazy. But um, that's a question I have. How do we not defend our? I mean, I know and other people I don't are going defend to, me. I, I don't. But I feel like it's a Jesus didn't defend He's like, I just let it roll off, you know? And so, but there are going to be people who do. I listened to a, a, a podcast with Bill Johnson on it mm-hmm. uh, about how to handle mm-hmm. criticism yesterday. He's got some pointers because he's really Let me really tell you, like, I felt like I was so immature in the way that I handle oh, things. Oh, wow. <laughs> I felt so immature. Uh, just listening to the way that he processes. Oh. And when he had a critic, he was telling a story about a critic who... um. I guess it, it was a friend. Oh, of course they have a lot. They write books and they do whole ministries yeah. against that church, which I don't understand either. But um, <laughs> anyways, he was saying it, it was just relevant for my season that um, there was someone on the inside who had written a book against him Oh, or something. In, a friend, within their church. Somebody who was on the inside and written something against him or whatever. And he said that he sent this person a message and said, thank you for doing this. Mm. Thank you for doing this. It takes a lot of courage. Um, he, he said, not because I think it's going to help the church, but because anything I want that's good in life is on the other side of what's difficult. Walk through <laughs> a fence. I say, yeah. And time. just his grace and how he yeah. sincerely blessed them. Yeah. I was going, oh. he has he strong core value of blessing and not cursing. If I've learned like, a f- there's a few things I learned there it was to bless your enemies. And it, that he is huge. That's why people are like, say he's he's horrible. I'm like, this man is mo- so like Jesus. Anyway, yeah, blessing it, people that. Yeah, whatever. Hurt you. It, I I just it spoke to me. Somebody yeah. had sent it to yeah. me. It was a podcast on relational conflict, and I was oh. like, oh my gosh, this is speaking yeah. my language. It's just, it, it's hard to answer for everything, and I don't think we have to. That's good. You know, you should give you should give a defense for what God is doing. Obviously, mm. you should be able to speak about it, yeah, and answer questions transparently, yeah, and sit down with the right people. And um, but at the end of the day, um, I think I'd rather be a little controversial mm. than be just another voice in the culture, blending in, echoing everybody else's opinions. Mm. Dang. Yeah, me too. We're kind of similar in that way. I know. <laughs> Very, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. It's not like an intentional, I just want to be different or go against the man. I just like, why? Asking why. And like, why do we do it this way? I've always, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and why? It's Holy Spirit on this. Yeah. What's it? There's a lot to say there. Following the dev, following Jesus. It's not to be different, not to do things in a, just to be, um, what's that word? 
rebellious, I guess. It's like, what is Jesus calling us to do and do it? And if that offends people. Well, and that's the heart. That's the heart of it. Like in 2020, that was very controversial. Yeah. And we kept getting the people that were, had the political spirit in our gatherings that would get frustrated because I wouldn't speak on certain topics that were happening. I would speak on topics I felt led to speak on. Yeah. But they were trying to Not pressure like, you too. But I wouldn't respond to that yeah. pressure of what they wanted us to talk about or whatever. Yeah. And really, the heart of what we were doing was faithfulness to God. It was not rebellion. Yeah. Yes. Jesus. It was faithfulness to the voice of Jesus. That's it. Holy Spirit. Who do you want us? Where do you want us to go? What do you want us to do? It was faithful to the word. Mm. We just faithfulness was the heart of what we had done when we decided to keep meeting whenever the city said no or whatever, like that was controversial yeah, for sure. For sure. But it was not rooted. Like we weren't starting, we weren't protesting. Right. Right. It was, if my obedience is protest, then you got to solve that with God. <laughs> I but don't know. It speaks for itself then. Yeah. My obedience to God is just simply devotion. Yeah. You know, so it's more rooted in devotion and faithfulness than it is anything else. Yeah. So even like this building. Yeah. Why are we here? Well, because we feel strongly, strongly. And there's been overwhelming confirmations through prayer, through it's prayer, this, through in people the, in the city, yeah. not just internal. Right. Those that have come around us that say this yeah. is happening. Yeah. God is doing something here. And so um, this is happening. I don't know how, mm -hmm. but the building I'm pointing towards the warehouse. Yeah. This is right happening. There. This is happening. This is happening. Um, the mission space in the avenue, mm. the community outreach center mission base that is growing much faster than our church in many ways. Um, it's happening. Why? Because Jesus paid for the salvation and the healing and the deliverance and the provision that's coming to these people in the neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's, Able that's not, that's things. not something I can, I can argue about or like, I, I can't compromise that. Like mm. I will not compromise on getting the gospel to the poor. It's good. If you want me to compromise on getting the gospel to the poor, find another church. Mm. Like if, if you can see people suffer, you can see single moms and abuse. You can see teens and domestic violence. If you can see this stuff and your heart doesn't break, you're not my tribe. Mm. That's, yeah. You know, if you can see this Jesus's stuff tribe. and yeah, you're not Jesus's tribe. Said if, like, did I ever know you? Do I even? Yeah. That's the thing. He like, dude, yeah. we don't have the, anything in common. Yeah. Like, so if you, if you can stay safely behind bulletproof glass, like I said, Sunday and, and call it Christianity, we're not in the yeah. same covenant. Mm. How do you uh, encourage people? Cause you've challenged me in worship leading big time. Like, cause I just want to like charge ahead and you're like, you've got to bring people with you. How do I you know. bring people in? How do you bring people in when they don't <sighs> have that? Cause it's similar. Well, number you one, do you don't have to be the person that's on the street, hands and feet every day. Maybe you're a mom and you've got three kids and you're, you know, your husband is a firefighter and he's gone and you're alone and you know, it's difficult. You're in a season right now. I think number one, you have to give yourself grace, be easy on yourself. That's good. But if you, but what you can't do is become critical towards it. Mm. What do you mean? Like, so there's some that because it's not happening in their life or because their life doesn't look like an evangelist or look yeah. like someone who's on the streets ministering to the poor, they say like, well, it's not important. No, no, you have to, Ooh, that's good. Yeah. You have to say, no, that's a good thing. Mm. And I can sow in another ways. I can pray. I can give. I can encourage. I can pray for the leaders. I can call them and give them a word. I can um, take my kids and volunteer, you know, twice a year and expose them to some of this ministry. Yeah. Um, you know, also, we didn't even talk about it. We, we, we built a house church in Tijuana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to be there next month. So yeah, we've got, we've got a whole cool. network of passion ministry project. in Tijuana. That's a passion project. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And I feel like this podcast, we try, we're we trying to talk about the fact that to build a house, you are building a house. Let's say you are that mom. Like you are doing or influencing the city. You are doing it by 
being faithful in what's in front yes, of you. Yes, yes. You're influencing the city. And this this is the other thing, too, for moms. Like this, I felt like I got a word for parents the other day, and I I didn't have a place to release it until this moment. Here so we go. Just yeah. quick. Like Psalm 127 says that children are like arrows in the hands of a warrior, in the quiver of a warrior. Mm. And so like our children, there might be a season where you pull back only to aim and then you release them. So if you have a season, like right now I'm in a season where I've, I'm actually not doing everything I want to do in ministry simply because I have children and I'm trying to aim there and yet. pull back and release them. Mm. In the next five years, my nest is going to be much emptier because my kids are out of high school and certain things are happening. That takes off so much disappointment when you're like, I know my season and I my know se- I'm, pull, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm pulling back on some things. So I don't go to every social gathering. I can't go to every birthday party. I can't go to everything. Why? Because I'm pulling back and I'm aiming my children. Yeah. And so my life really revolves around them mm. right now. Like, so when I'm not doing church work or whatever, like our life is built around how we can help them get positioned in life. Um, That's so good. Yeah. Behind their stuff. So wow. you got to pull back. Yeah. Be okay with pulling back. So you say, how do you help people walk into this? Wherever your season's at, you might be in a time where you're pulling back. That's okay. Um, yeah. Everyone's... Find ways to pray into it and, and, and focus on your assignment. Yeah. That's so good. Focus on your assignment. Okay. One more question. How, when you are in the middle of hard, hard to breathe moments around your table, how do you apply? Like, how do you get out of that? And not like, not just get out, go through it. How do you see above? Like, cause you mentioned that at the beginning, like this comes in waves and it's like pretty good. But then randomly it'd be like, ah, how do you, yeah see jesus through how do you and and i guess i want to apply it like hear from you but also like if someone feels like they're just drowned oh my gosh the moment where they're they're stepping out because you were talking about faith and like we don't see until we step out and like what kind of uh, faith is this without without doing that but like how someone who's in the middle of it and they have that moment when they're at their house and they're like that fear um, or something that comes upon them because they're like oh my gosh i am taking a risk like, how do you, you know what I mean? How yeah, do you yeah. cling to Jesus or what do you do practically, I guess, or spiritually um, for yourself? And maybe it's tough because you're in it right now. It was literally fresh yesterday. So last night, as I was getting hit with this, these waves, I'd say you probably would interpret it as anxiety, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, or so real, you know, just being honest, yeah. like, so, um, there's moments when I'm at the dinner table and I'm good and things are fine. And then I sit down on the couch and my mind wanders to the problem and I start getting uh, fearful. That sounds like the answer. Yeah. So what I did was I, number one, I didn't um, start talking about it. Yeah. Okay. I get quiet because for me, when I start talking about things, sometimes it gets worse. And so this is just me, but um, let the kids get to bed about nine o'clock. I shut the TV off. And I start reading my Bible. Mm. I uh, put myself in a different headspace. I start reading through some promises that God has given me over the past. Mm. This morning, couldn't sleep. I was up 3 a.m. Not thinking about the project, but stirred by it. Yeah. Stirred by everything. Um, just restless. Wow. You know, and like kind of tossing and turning. Finally get up. I go start the coffee pot and I go back to an old well of worship is where I went. Mm. And so I went back to really old, old upper room moments Oh wow! that were like ministering to me years ago. Wow. And so, um, remember I went back to those and I just sat with my headphones on for two hours, (laughs) two hours alone. Didn't open my Bible. Didn't do anything. I just started my coffee, sat there and I just said, minister to me, Lord. Mm. And I just let the Holy Spirit minister to me. And as I'm sitting there, the songs are reminding me of things and then reminding me of what God's done and who God is. And then I read through in my Bible, I have listed, I could show you, I have everything that's basically that he's said and done since this journey has yeah. began, like from, you know, it's been a lot. So there's like probably 50 words. Yeah. And, and just miracle moments that I can draw from. And I go through and I read them from start to finish and meditated on most of them start to finish. Strengthening so yourself. Them. Yeah, strengthen myself in the Lord. That's it. So, and and then six o'clock hit 
and Shanna's starting to get up because Drew has training and other things. I've still got my headphones on and I say good morning, and but my spirits changed. And I still, even now, sitting at because I was at a place last night where I was going to cancel the podcast. <laughs> no way! I was going to cancel the podcast, and then today we have two pastors coming from another city to come sit in our environment, sit in our culture, at our staff meeting, and oh, wow. learn from us because what's happening is inspiring. So they're like, "Could we just come and sit with you guys?" And I said, "Yeah, definitely come, and we'll pray for you or whatever, yeah. and we can walk through the building, and it's all good." Um, so we're not on an island. We're, we're yeah. letting people yeah. can come in, come in, yes. come in and hang, come see I what's going on. I just want to like highlight something to, cause it applies maybe for people, but, um, I just noticed you woke up at 3am like stirred and that's frustrating and that's exhausting, but, or 4am, whatever time, but it was if, three, 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 yeah. I would just say like, take this as an example. If you're listening, like I, and some of you are like, how do I have make time for any of this? You do if you you want it that bad. And I know maybe the Lord like woke you up or maybe it was whatever woke you up, but like choosing to get up and it's tiring and maybe you're like, but I need sleep more. Maybe your spirit needed that and you were able to do that before the crazy, before the, the everyone got up, before the day is going, you had this moment to pause with him and strengthen yourself before. And so I just want to encourage people, like if you feel like it's impossible to find that moment, there are, it could be in the most random places, but you can do it also. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I was going to, I was halfway going to cancel these pastors trip and everything. Whoa. I was like, I don't want to be with people today. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. I have my moments too, yeah. you know, like I'm human yeah. and it's not because I just don't want to have to answer for what's going on right now because I'm going, <sighs> goodness, it's, I don't have an explanation. Yeah. It's too but much. I feel like that's the team too that surrounds you. I know. Is, and yeah. I, and I, but in the end, I show up because I'm responsible. <sighs> That'll preach. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I show up because people rely on me. I show up because even in my weakness, I need to demonstrate Jesus's power. That's good. You know? And so, uh, yeah. this conversation, like I said, is actually therapeutic. So good. Thank you. yeah, good. A little therapy session with Mariah. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's really good. I mean, the stepping out in the water is always going to be scary. And, uh, I think that doing it is there's like, you find out you can walk on it because mm. it's, it's him calling you. And so, yeah. Um, and for anybody out there. So yeah, yeah I love what you said and just to minister to them. Cause yeah. I think this, yeah needs to minister to somebody i think it is yeah i don't think there's no problem on jesus's end with sending you the power the provision you need you know the whatever encouragement you're looking for whatever it is the problem isn't on jesus's end we just have to get hooked up to him Mm. So like in any place and time, it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. If you just will just him. hit the brakes, hit the brakes, call a stop and go, I need him. Just one glance. I just need him. And if you'll do that, whether it's 15 minutes in a break room. Seriously. Yep. Yep. Or in your car, in there. get there 30 minutes early. Yeah. Whether you take a, take a walk, whether you're on the treadmill, instead of listening to junk material on podcasts, like listen to worship for a second. Yeah. Um, I, I, I listened to a podcast yesterday and they were talking about brain drain. Oh, it's kind of crazy. It's a thing. Did you know that your IQ is actually lower when you have your phone in your hand? Ooh, I'm not surprised. And they said, they said they they were, they were giving us all these stats and it was really good. But, um, they said that there's this, uh, and I started looking it up with AI a little bit. <laughs> but, I don't but trust AI. AI. No, yeah, I know I don't fully trust AI either, but it was uh, just Google turns into AI now. And anyways, they were saying that I said, I said, how does having a smartphone affect your IQ? And it said it actually studies have shown that it drastically lowers your IQ to have it a becomes, smartphone in your hand. Yeah, it's like it becomes your IQ. Yeah, so you yeah. don't think for yourself, you but rely. your brain, yeah. the more you're on your phone, your brain drains. Mm. And so your brain actually stops creating because mm. you can just go to the phone That's to, so to inform you. Right. Yeah. So setting down your phone sometimes yeah. and just breathing. Mm. Sometimes I water my grass. This sounds like that such an old man good. thing. No, it's so good. Sounds like such an old man <laughs> thing. So but like good. when I'm really stressed, you know what? Well, that's the other thing I did last night 
Grounding. At nine o'clock night, nine o'clock last night, I'm watering my grass in my yard and I'm watering like my plants. You do the same thing. Yeah, Matt Brown says he does the same thing. I go out and I, I left my phone. It's nature. And I'm like, I'm just gonna water something. <laughs> like see it grow. See it grow. That's nurturing it. Nurturing yes. something. Yes. That's so good. Water my olive tree, That's water so my good. mango tree, water my succulents. That's a word. Even in your weakness, when you're feeling just like, water and just... water and water, and that's what I do. I and I won't get a sprinkler system because of that. Because I like so to water good. it. Because it reminds me that if I don't water it, it dies. Whoa. That's a little too like feely. That's like Not more. So your, that's We're more your the, style is, than my style. But <laughs> I'm like loving that. Yeah. I think that you you said it. We can. We're, I just want to wrap up because we got next week too. But um, you said the. You started the, when you had that moment of like anxiousness at the table or wherever um, you when you were looking at the problem and we were looking at the things. And I feel like that's a key there also is mm -hmm. like uh, fixing our eyes on what on who and when we're looking at those things like Peter looking out at the waves. He he started falling drowned when you're drowned. And when you're looking at Jesus. Mm -hmm. He is what sustains us and keeps us going. So I feel like that's yeah just when you start looking at the things, all the impossibilities, it's going to look huge, but look at him. And that's back to the prayer. When we come together and pray, I feel like it, it just like whew, everything, it seems possible again in community. It's good. It's so and good. You know what? The longer I'm in this too, I thank God for the good people that are like mm. really loving what's going on and putting their whole heart into it. Cause there's so many, Yeah. but you are a special leader just so you know, oh, I know you thanks. Ask for that, but like you are a breath of fresh air. Oh. When you come in the room and the conversation, you're always just like, Oh, it's so easy. Like <laughs> let them go and let this go. And God's got this and God has that. And I'm always like, just like put Mariah on my Alexa. <laughs> and so I wake up in the morning and it's let like, let it go. All my problems, let Mariah speak into it. Oh, it's only from like history of doing that. Honestly, it's not because yeah. I don't care. And it's, I, if people know me, they know I do deeply. It's just that when you know that he's got it, like Romans eight says it, he works everything together for those, uh, the, for good, those who love him, you know? And I feel like you just got to believe him, trust him. It's hard. It's not that easy, but yeah. Thanks. Thank it's you. not like I live in a positive world. I'm a very melancholy like feeler and love ain't getting angry sometimes too. <laughs> I love I've it seen, all. I've seen your anger. Yeah. So. But, but I know what it's like to stand on him also. And hopefully I can encourage people in that. So thanks. Good job. Well, that's a wrap today. We'll be back next week and um, we're going to keep continuing the series to build a house more on local church and then to influence a city. But like I was mentioning, it's they're combined really that the building a house is influencing a city. So don't think that we're trying to separate the two. They're together, but we are going to have two separate series just to be more organized. But yeah. Anything else? That's it. Woo! Okay. Happy day guys. Get Bye. out there. <laughs> Bye.